Genesis chapter 22, the binding of Isaac, is one of the most theologically confusing and emotionally heart-wrenching stories in the Bible. Abraham, who ultimately becomes the patriarch of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, is prepared to murder his favorite son to show his devotion to God. We, the audience, are left with questions about the nature of faith and the relationship between God and humans. Is there a master architect or do we have free will? Is God benevolent or cruel? Is this story a model of faith or a cautionary tale of a zealot? My name is Emily Isaacson, and I'm a conductor and arts entrepreneur. I study how the binding of Isaac has been represented in visual art, literature, and music, because I am interested in how artists have made meaning out of this evasive story. Specifically, I'm interested in how artists build a dramatic or theological narrative. How do they render Isaac, Abraham, and God? Full disclosure, I've been studying this topic for years. It was my dissertation for my doctorate, and I am still bewildered by this story. Historically, we will find that artists have engaged the sacrifice story in three ways. As a guide to moral conduct, as an exemplar of human drama, and as a means for addressing contemporary politics. In the Western tradition, the most prevalent interpretation is as a parable of faith. The story explains how one should conduct himself in the face of hardship. Abraham and Isaac model the proper relationship, not only between father and son, but also between man and God. Around the 10th century, in the medieval mystery plays, writers began not only to recount the Bible narrative, but to emphasize the story's liturgical function by suggesting the binding of Isaac as a paradigm of the Eucharist and Isaac's brush with death as a prefiguration of Christ's crucifixion. For example, in the Chester play, Abraham and Isaac represent God and Jesus. At the end of the story, the narrator summarizes Abraham's deed was done, quote, an example of Jesus. To make this topological interpretation clear, the writers of the medieval mystery plays rewrite some narrative elements. In the Hebrew Bible, Abraham is the central figure, and Isaac serves as tool in the narrative. Since Christ is the central figure in the redemption cycles, however, Isaac had to replace Abraham as the primary character. This reorientation required that Isaac wrestle verbally with the meaning and manner of his death. The medieval mystery plays set an artistic precedent for experimenting with how Abraham and Isaac are characterized and reorienting the central themes of the story. The humanist movement that swept through Europe from the 14th to the 17th century changed the conversation regarding Old Testament stories. The characters in the Bible were no longer depicted as stoic prophets and noble patriarchs. Increasingly, they were seen as humans, human beings with feelings, thoughts, and bodies. Rembrandt was fascinated by Abraham's complex response to God's command, and he returned to the binding story numerous times. The first painting from 1635 is a life-size portrait of Abraham as an old man with white hair and a wrinkled brow. Below him, Isaac lays contorted against a pile of wood, his face forced down by Abraham's hand. Rembrandt uses shadow to hide all but Abraham's face and to draw focus to the terror in Abraham's eyes. After many other attempts, towards the end of his life, Rembrandt returned one last time to the subject to show his sympathy for Abraham's struggle. 
Like the earlier works, the angel, Abraham, and Isaac are again locked together. But this time, rather than having their eyes be the binding force, Abraham uses his body to hold Isaac down, while the angel attempts to restrain Abraham from behind. The scene is both intensely physical and also tender. The angel seems to reach out both to stop and console Abraham. Rembrandt's work is remarkable for his interest in Abraham's psyche and his compassion for his trauma. If the medieval mystery play emphasized the ritual aspect of the binding of Isaac and Rembrandt's art offered a more intimate perspective, Italian painter Michelangelo Caravaggio features the story's drama. In his 1603 painting, Caravaggio shows a balding Abraham holding a glistening knife in the air as he pushes Isaac's head upon a hard stone. Isaac's mouth is open as if screaming or sobbing. The sense of immediacy and violence are heightened by the diagonal thrust of the body parts and the sudden contrast of highlights. Most striking, the frame cuts off each body as if the viewer is only steps away. Caravaggio radically changed the interpretation of the sacrifice story. Abraham is portrayed as savagely cruel and Isaac as struggling desperately instead of piously submissive. Caravaggio depicts the binding not as a parable of faith, but as an attempted murder. Genesis 22 so distressed the Danish writer Soren Kierkegaard that he devoted an entire book to explore four different possible explanations for the story. In the first version, when Isaac realizes his father's intentions and begs for his life, Abraham rebukes Isaac and screams, stupid boy, do you think I am your father? I am an idolater. Do you think it is God's command? No, it is my desire. But then Abraham prays softly, Lord God in heaven, I thank you. It is better that he believes me a monster than he should lose faith in you. In Kierkegaard's second interpretation, he imagines the consequences of this event on Abraham's psyche. He imagines Abraham traumatized, physically scarred for the remainder of his life. In the second version, Kierkegaard wonders whether Abraham's act of faith in fact caused him to lose his faith in God. While the second interpretation envisions Abraham's depression after the sacrifice, the third imagines his regret. Kierkegaard focuses on the self-doubt Abraham experiences after attempting to murder his son. Ultimately, in the third story, Abraham concludes that he misunderstood God's directions and that he has betrayed his family and his God. Abraham prays to God to forgive him for being willing to sacrifice Isaac. In the last account of the sacrifice story, Kierkegaard deviates the most from Genesis 22. Whether by loss of nerve or as an explicit act of disobedience, Abraham fails to act. He cannot bring himself to kill Isaac. And as a result, Isaac loses his faith. Not a word of this is ever said in the world and Isaac never talked to anyone about what he had seen. At the end of Fear and Trembling, in the eulogy on Abraham, ultimately Kierkegaard sees faith as a paradox that cannot be understood by reason or conventional morality. Over the next 500 years, the sacrifice story became a meme amongst visual artists and composers who used it to reflect on the values and characteristics of modern society. 
Benjamin Britten, the great 20th century English composer, set the Chester mystery play in 1952 as a guide to religious conduct. There are three characters and only two voices. Abraham is a tenor, Isaac a male alto, and the two voices together represent the voice of God. In 1958, Britain was commissioned to create a work for the consecration of the new Coventry Cathedral, which was destroyed in 1940 by German bombs during World War II. He wrote the War Requiem and intertwines the liturgical text of the Latin Requiem Mass with poetry by Wilfred Owen. Owen's poetry decries the fate of young men sent to their deaths by an unfeeling patriarchal system. When Britain uses Owen's poetry in the War Requiem, he transforms the traditional religious imagery into a critique over political conflict and mankind's capacity for violence. So, what does this art tell us? Do these artists help us to understand God's intentions or Abraham's character or what it means to have faith? Do they make a case for religiously justified murder? If, like Kierkegaard believed, faith is a paradox that cannot be understood by reason or conventional morality, but instead requires blind trust do these artists provide an answer for how to respond when we are deceived by the object of that trust? Finally, does faith, particularly the sort of zealous devotion shown by Abraham, have a place in modernity? Over 2,000 years, artists have transformed the binding of Isaac's story from a parable of faith into a model for suffering in the face of political oppression, from a clear example of religious devotion into a questionable episode in the foremost patriarch's past, from violence in the name of the Almighty into violence in service of the state. Artists' response to the story seems to be grouped into three themes. Carissimi and the Miracle Plays use the story to explain proper moral and religious conduct. Rembrandt and Kierkegaard explore the religious icons as if they were real human beings with conflicting emotions and loyalties who can be traumatized by their own actions. Britain and Segal use the story as an object to explore the role of religion in the 21st century. I close by offering a fourth interpretation and making an argument for the uniqueness of my art form, music. Music is uniquely able to present seemingly polarized concepts and emotions as a unified musical statement. Music juxtaposes previously unconnected signs, melody, harmony, rhythm, dynamics, articulation, and form, among many others to produce new codes of meaning. Any one element tells a story, all the features resonating simultaneously give a portrait that allows room for contradiction to be held together. This is the kind of thinking required to engage with the sacrifice story.
Thank you.